right guys, so welcome back to Gamer Today. Guys, today we're going to be talking about a game called Cyberpunk 2077, and I'm sure you guys have all heard about this game and are probably sick of hearing about it, but we're going to talk about it today. The reason for it is because it came out the gate completely broken, it was overhyped, and it's a complete mess, at least on the PS4 and original Xbox. Even on the new consoles, the PS5 and the Series X, it doesn't run that great. But it does look a heck of a lot better than it does on the base level PS4 or base level Xbox. And you know, the Pro model is okay, the PS4 Pro, it looks almost bearable, but it's still garbage. At the end of the day, the frame rates don't maintain 30 frames per second. That's horrible. I know we could talk about 27 frames, 25 frames, and go, okay, this gets a pass. But we're talking about a game that goes down to 15 or 13 frames per second. That is a freaking slideshow. That's not a game. That's barely a game. For $60, you want me to pay $60 for a game that runs at 15 frames per second? Come on now, guys. Now, a disclaimer for you all. I did not purchase this game. Cyberpunk 2077 is not on my wish list this year. I don't want to buy it. I have no intentions to. Never did didn't care. It took them seven years to get this game out the gate. Seven years is a long time to come out the gate broken, guys. I'm sorry, but that's just not acceptable. 15 frames per second is a slideshow. I can't deal with that. The graphics are blurry, the texture glitches are insane, and the fact that your characters can go through the ground and basically things just go haywire, it's insane. It doesn't make any sense. Why is this acceptable, guys? Sony and Xbox and what do you call Microsoft is supposed to be testing these games and putting them on their store if they're meeting a certain grade level. You know, at least they're playable on the consoles, as advertised, that's the whole point. Someone got paid off along the way, clearly. Obviously no one played this game, no one's seen what we are seeing now. And that's a problem. I know they're on their fourth hotfix already, fourth. That's crazy, the game's only been out for a few days, and it's on the fourth hotfix. Hey, they're getting to it real fast, that's great. No, it's not. This game should have been in a better state before it came out the gate. And I say that highly because the texture's not even rendering in at all. Like on people's faces and on garbage cans and different things like that, I know we're talking about garbage cans, but guys, that's a huge deal to see textures that don't load in. It makes you really feel like you're not playing the right game. Are we on the PlayStation 1 again? Are we on the N64? No! So why does the game look worse than those systems did? I'd rather plug in an old system and play one of those games than see this mess. This is a joke. And guys, before you get excited about this fourth hot patch, it didn't even fix all the things. It didn't fix every single texture glitch. It didn't fix most of them, for that matter. And there's still a whole bunch of haywire glitches where things are going crazy even after the patch. And still the frame rate is still basically a slideshow. Yeah, render distance has been sort of fixed in some areas of the game, and certain things that we already know about, like lighting and texture rendering and stuff, has been fixed, but not all of it. That's a big problem. Not like they put out a broken game on day one and then fixed it the next day. Guys, they're making very small iteration changes and things that should have been done already in game testing. That's why they have paid game testers, because of this, so that you don't have to go through this experience and gamers get to enjoy the game day one. I might add that they've asked for pre-orders on this game. How could you pre-order a game that comes out broken day one. That is insane. I feel like that money that's going for pre-orders should be guaranteed that you're going to get a game that works fine, or at least as advertised. Now, the other thing that they did that was shady, and again, I might want to add, guys, that Witcher 3 came out the same way as this game. Not as bad, but still in a very broken state. This is their first time moving from that whole, like, I don't know, medieval times thing going into the real populated city thing. I get it. The engine that they use, which is their own custom engine, CD, uh, CD Projekt Red, the company that makes the game, the studio house, you know, they have their own custom engine for this, but I get that. But what's the use in having a custom engine if you don't know how to optimize it for the systems that you're targeting? Which is the PS4, the Xbox, the PC, all these different systems. I would love to see if this is, this game could run on the Switch at even at 10 frames per second. Come on, let's be real. It'd be like 5 frames per second, not even. That would be insane. But the funny part about mentioning the Switch in this whole ordeal is, the game on PS4 base map model, or the original Xbox, looks like a Nintendo Switch game. Even on the PS4 Pro, still looks like a Nintendo Switch Switch game on your big TV. It really doesn't look good, guys. It's blurry, it's messy, controls and latency lag and all that are going on because the frame rate dips. It's just horrible. You might want to make a turn, you can't make a turn with the car, you end up hitting something. You may not see a pedestrian because it didn't load in yet, yet you run them over and then you started trouble within the game for yourself. Because there's like a wanted system or something like that, something like GTA, I don't know how it works, I don't care. The point is, the controls, everything has to work out the gate. You've asked for pre-orders, you've asked for money up front, now you don't give us the proper product. I mean, yes, the game does work to a degree, but it crashes all the time, that's another thing. And someone actually made a post saying on the PS5, it crashes every hour and a half worth of gameplay. That is totally unacceptable. What if someone does want to beat the game in one day, they should be able to do it. Now, realistically, not many people are going to play for over an hour and a half, I understand that. But should you expect a crash every time? No, that's insane. Some people do want to put two to three hours into a game. I may not have that time, but you might. So that's something they should have considered. And obviously, they don't care about their customers, not even one bit. 
the idea of this game was to, you know, the story-wise, was basically to talk about companies ripping off their customers, etc., all about money. And this game's doing the same thing. The studio that's behind the game is doing what they advertise within the story of the game. That's ironic, but it's very funny at the same time. And guys, I've never understood why CD Projekt Red has ever been a big company or why people like this company. They make games like The Witcher 3. The Witcher games are garbage. They really are. They're boring. I don't know why people get into that. Maybe it's for you, and if that's for you, that's fine. But guys, there's nudity in the game and stuff that just doesn't appeal to me, and it's just too much of a goofy title. I like stuff that's more straightforward and doesn't have tons of glitches, and I have to wait three years to get into the game because now it can actually work on the console I paid for three years ago. No. I don't want to play every game that they make on PC. Not everyone has a PC that they can play games on. I might have a decent laptop for it, but I don't have a PC rig and I don't care to have one. Maybe one day I will, but I shouldn't have to choose, like, hey, you can't even play the game, it's a slideshow, or buy a huge PC and hope for the best. You know, I shouldn't have to choose between that to play someone's games. That's insane. There's so many other games out there on the market that are cheaper, that are better. Unfortunately, this game just drops the ball. And there's one more thing this money-hungry, stupid game company basically did, okay? They didn't put a warning about epilepsy seizures in their game, and that's a huge problem. How could they not do that? They're a major studio, right? How could they not have such a warning? There's indie titles that have warnings like that. It's not something that's optional. They have to put it in there, because there's people who suffer with epilepsy who will have a seizure from this kind of thing, or could be more pr uh, prone to having a seizure from it, and that's ridiculous. The fact that there's no warning, I mean, obviously they should know that going into it, a video game could always cause epilepsy epileptic seizures, or, you know, spells of some sort. I understand that, but the point is, it should still be a warning within the game. They may not know that. Some people don't know, hey, if I go into this game, should I have a higher probability? There's things in this game with the neon lights and flashing and the way they um, did some of the cutscenes in the game can actually affect someone's brain and cause them to have a problem. And hey, it could take someone's life, you just never know. If they have a seizure standing up or something, or they're next to something that could fall on them, etc., they can die. Is that something that's really worth it, guys? I mean, should we make excuses? Uses for a game company not taking that into precautions, that's insane. I worked for an indie game a long time ago, and even that game had basically that warning in it. I programmed a game with a, a company called Panzer Studios, and even they, back in the day, back in, I think, I don't even know, 2008, 2009, I forget what year that was, but they made that warning in the beginning of the game. Why couldn't a major studio do that? That was an indie studio. You see the difference? It's pretty stupid. I mean, a game that's going to make millions upon millions of dollars, it's already sold, I think, like 10 million copies or something. Like, come on now, guys. They make enough money off their games and have enough experience to know better than that. I really don't think we should be giving CD Projekt Red any pass on this, because this is a huge problem. I don't see how they can overlook something like, basically, epileptic warnings in a game that had been in the games for so long it's unbelievable, or at least on the box of a game, etc. It's there all the time. And I don't think we should give them a pass for stealing our money, either. Well, they didn't steal it. Yes, they did. Because if you did pre-order the game, you had no intentions of basically playing a game that was at 15 frames per second. Did they tell you up front that they were going to give you a game that's basically a slideshow or a blurry mess. No, they told you exactly the opposite. This game is going to run great. It's going to look amazing. It's the future. Come on now. The future, we've gone back to the N64 days. I don't know what to think of this stuff, guys, but I really think there should be some sort of litigation or something taken against this company because they've really done some trash things this time. They've messed up big. They've dipped their hands into the honey jar and they're not coming out, you know? They really are ignorant. They really are. I have no respect for this company. I've never had respect for this company. I think they make some really garbage products. But hey, maybe you guys do like like this company, but still, I wouldn't purchase this game. I have no intentions of purchasing it ever, especially after this whole garbage thing that they did in the beginning of the release. I could never give them money. Even if it was $10, I wouldn't do it. A dollar, I wouldn't do it. I just don't care. The game looks boring anyway. If you see how many shots from a gun you have to take down a person with, that's insane. And that Keanu Reeves guy, he's not a good actor, guys. I know a lot of you guys like Keanu Reeves, but did you see how he acted in this game? It's like no effort given at all. It's about as much effort as I'm giving right now, maybe less and I'm barely giving any effort on the microphone tonight. So my point is, yeah, they didn't do anything with this game with any $60 price tag. I'm sorry, it's just not. Now I will say, if you do have a top dollar PC rig, we're talking top dollar, not, you know, a couple grand, we're talking five to ten grand type, you know, PC builds, you can get some amazing gameplay out of this and it might be as advertised at that point. But keep in mind, there's still bugs that it's still broken on there too. It's just not as bad as basically everything else. So I don't know how you feel about that. But it, anyways, who can invest that kind of money right now into a PC rig. If you have a $2,000 PC rig, yeah, you'll be able to play the game. It should look great, and maybe you'll have great performance with it, but for the most part, you might need an even stronger PC than what you have right now. So I don't know if this game is worth it to almost anybody. But yeah, guys, hopefully you did enjoy the video. If you did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think of Cyberpunk 2077. Let me know if you purchased it. Let me know
know if you're going to buy it. What do you guys think of it? Even if you didn't buy it, just let me know anything. I'm curious in the comment section down below. Until next time, guys, it's been Gamer Today.